Kick it on, on your camera phone Get a little bad, you watch me put down Hello all, if you're watching this video, it is now 2023 and I'm just so excited for what this year has to offer. So excited. 2022 was a year of change, was a year of stress, was a year of happiness, was a year of tears, whether it be happy tears, sad tears, tears of excitement. It was just so much that happened in 2022. But I thank God that I made it to 2023 and I'm excited for what's to come. To all of my subscribers, hey girl, I missed y'all. And if you're new here, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button because you're gonna wanna stay. You are gonna wanna stay. So today, we are gonna talk about the things we need to leave in 2022, okay? So, if it don't apply, let it fly. If it do, then you know what to do. So, I'm not one to BS. Um, I just like to dive right into it because that's how I am. So, the first one I want to touch on is people pleasing. Yes, to all my people pleasers out there, I'm talking to you, okay? And as someone who is a retired people pleaser, someone who's still working on not being a people pleaser yes this one is for you and I can relate to this so much because I was the people pleaser the people pleaser I was the type of person that I would inconvenience myself just to make others feel good and I thought that this was a good thing I used to think that this made me a great friend a great family member or whatever I felt like this really made me a great person but honestly, what it did was, it was just doing a disservice to myself. So before we go into this whole tangent about being a people pleaser, let me give y'all the definition in case y'all confused. So a people pleaser is somebody that has a strong urge to please other people. Not only do they have a strong urge to please other people, but even at their own expense. I'll give you an example. Let's say you had a long day at work, you're tired, you're stressed, you're mentally and physically drained, and all you want to do is go home, soak, meditate, but someone close to you wants to come by, hang out, whatever the case may be. And instead of you saying, no, I just want to relax, you know? You say okay because you're hell bent on pleasing that person at your own expense. And it may be because you think that if you say no, they're gonna get mad or they're gonna not view you as a great friend or whatever the case may be. So then you invite them over, but the whole time you're not enjoying their company and your energy is gonna show. And you're just feeling this resentment like, oh, why are they here, this and that. You start blaming that person when honestly, you don't want to blame because you don't know how to set boundaries and you don't know how to say no. People that people please, they like to look at themselves or see themselves as a victim when really you are not the victim, honey. And let me tell you why you're not the victim. You're doing it because you're seeking validation from this person. You're doing it, like I said, to victimize yourself. And you're also doing it because you want something in return. You want to be there for so many people because you want to feel needed. But then whenever you feel like you need someone, you expect them to go just as hard for you. But then when they can't because they're setting boundaries for themselves because they're saying no, you get mad and you resent them for it. That's on you, sis. So stop it. Stop it. You should stop doing this because you're damaging your own relationships. You. It's not authentic on your part. And you resent the person because you agree or volunteer to do something that you really don't want to do. And to keep it a buck, it's passive aggressive. Now that we then got that established, you want to know how to stop? You want to know how I stopped? I realized that I have choices in life. Me. Me. I got choices. Not only do I have a choice, but my choice matters. 
And another way to stop is to identify your priorities, set your boundaries, and say no. And I can go on and on about people pleasing as a retired people pleaser, but we're gonna save that for another video, okay? And we're gonna go into number two. Y'all have got to stop ignoring clear red flags, okay? I'm not talking about yellow flags. I'm not even talking about orange flags. I'm talking about big, bold red flags. You gotta stop, you gotta stop. Whether it be relationships with family, relationships with friends, uh, relationships with coworkers, like whoever, whomever, just stop ignoring the red flags and listen to your gut. But I'm gonna touch on unbalanced relationships. An unbalanced relationship to me means that you're putting out more than you're receiving. You're the only one making an effort. It seems like you're the only one reaching out. Um, and you're the only one that can be happy for this person's accomplishments. But when it comes to anything you accomplish, that person can never really be happy about it. They're either negative, they either are bitter, or they don't really say nothing at all, like silence. It's just silent. And that to me is the biggest red flag. When you're silent, when it comes to all of my accomplishments, you know what I mean? Because showing support should never be one-sided in any relationship, especially when the person is supposed to care about you. Now, as far as relationships, a big red flag would be not even relationships, whether it be relationship, dating, somebody saying they wanna pursue you or whatever. If they're not putting in the effort or if they're just doing the bare minimum, they're just trying to string you along. That should be a red flag there because if that person wanted to, they would. But you're going along with it because you're hoping that, oh, this will change or, oh, eventually, you know, this will be what I'm looking for. And to me, that's ignoring truths for temporary happiness. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Number three, stop accepting just anything. <laughs> Stop accepting just anything. Up your standards. What I mean by that is know your work, okay? Know your work. And what I mean by that is know your work and don't settle for just any job, for just any friendship, for just any relationship. Like don't settle, you know what I mean? In life, we have choices and our choices matter. And if you're in a situation that you do not want to be in or you're just unhappy with and it's um, really just affecting your quality of life, you can do something about it. You don't have to settle. If you don't like your job and you know you want to make it to the next level, you want a better position, look at those requirements of that position, figure out what you have to do and make it happen. And also what goes with that is to never stop learning. I don't care if you do make it to that position. Never stop learning because growth never stops and it shouldn't. Number four, stop promoting this unhealthy burnout lifestyle, okay? Or hustle culture or whatever you call it. Stop promoting that. It's bad for your physical health. It's bad for your mental health. It's, it's just bad in general. Work-life balance is a healthy lifestyle. Quality time with not only yourself, but the people you love, that's a healthy lifestyle. Self-care, alone time, that is a healthy lifestyle. Doing the things that'll benefit your health, your mental health, that is a healthy lifestyle. So stop it, stop with this. Oh yeah, I have to stay busy. I'm working 24 seven, I'm breaking my back. For what? Like, who are you trying to impress here? Because at the end of the day, if you're doing all of this for a job, after you croak and drop dead because you didn't work yourself to death, they ain't gonna do nothing but replace you. And then what do you have to show for your life? That you worked 80 to 100 hours a week? What have you done with all of this money that you've earned? Have you just sat and enjoyed life? We have to stop it, y'all. We have got to stop it. And that's one thing I do admire about the younger generation. They seek balance. 
and I really admire that. Five, stop with these unhealthy coping skills, okay? Stop it. And what I mean by that is stop with the stress eating, stop with the excessive drinking, and stop starving yourself. Because all three of those things are gonna send you into an early grade. Stop it. Stressful eating is not solving your issues. If anything, it's basically a whole bunch of calories that you did not need in the first place. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. And then after you're done stuffing your guts, your problem's still gonna be there. And you're gonna have a gut, okay? You're gonna have a gut. So stop it. Uh, secondly, don't starve yourself because we need food. You need food to live. Like, what are you doing starving yourself? How is that benefiting the situation? How is drinking excessively gonna benefit your situation? It's temporary. It's temporary pleasure to help you, I guess, escape your reality. But guess what? Your reality is still gonna be there. Oh, well, I guess I'll just use my free time to drink or to stress eat rather than just facing the problem, rather than addressing the issue. Still gonna be there, so stop. Number six, I have one in my hand, so let's see. Six, there we go, six, okay? Stop, stop putting people in a box. <laughs> I see it all the time on social media. I see a lot of videos on social media, especially TikTok, this is the only example I can think of right now, but you'll have women that, that'll say, <sighs> y'all need to stop with the 25 mm lashes and get with the short lashes, or uh, you all gotta stop doing this or that at this age. Blah, blah, blah. Look, do what works for you. If you don't like extra long lashes, extra short lashes, if you don't like the extra long nails, or if you think the French tip is boring, do you boo, do what works for you. You know what I mean? It is okay for people to be different, just like it's okay for you to be different. Life is not a one size fits all. And don't try to fit in, just be yourself. If you like a different type of music than the next person, that's your prerogative. Like, oh, you like that? That's immature. Oh, I'm more mature because I don't do this or I do that. Um, honey, maturity is knowing that people can like different things. People can do different things. Find your people and stop criticizing others. Number seven, humble yourself and be grateful. Humble thyself and be grateful. Stop complaining, stop projecting, and stop looking down on others. A lot of times I notice that people who don't like their own situation, they are quick to complain and also project. Let me put this on do not disturb because child, I keep forgetting to do that when I, I film my videos. Like, yeah, I'm not filming a video, right? And people won't call. But as soon as I start to film a video, that's when everybody in their mama wanna call me. Like, no ma'am. Do not disturb. This is me setting boundaries, put my phone on do not disturb. Back in business. But yeah, if you don't like your situation, like I said, change it. But don't sit up there and, and continuously trauma dump and complain. Nobody wants to hear about that. Look, as my friend or my family member, you got one, one maybe once, maybe even twice to complain to me about the same situation, but boo. I'm gonna be looking at you like, what you gonna do about it? What are you doing to change that? And if you feel like you gotta just vent and go on and on about the same problem, get a therapist, get a psychologist, because honey, your friends are not that. They are not that, they have their own issues. Stop it, we too grown for that. Also, stop using people to cope with your unhappy life. Find a therapist, and once again, Stop projecting. Your insecurities, your bad habits, your unhealed trauma have nothing to do with me. Also, when it comes to being grateful, to being thankful, be thankful for the life that you already have. It's okay to want more, 
but if you're not thankful for what you already have if you're not taking care of what you already have then how is god gonna see fit to bless you with what you want a lot of people wish they had a car to drive a lot of people wish they lived on their own a lot of people wish they could be in your shoes right now and we a lot of times seem to forget that especially people who use social media as a comparison they see everybody else's best selves on an app and then they take that to heart everybody's going to show their best selves on an app who's going to really show and share everything that they're going through behind that smile and some people's pictures even some of my pictures i may be going through something don't ever compare your life to someone else's because of what you see on social media everybody's showing their best selves at the end of the day so you can't really blame social media blame yourself and figure out why you're so triggered by seeing other people's happiness and why you keep comparing yourself figure that out be thankful for what you have by working for what you want not only working but praying manifesting planning and if you want to know more about manifesting watch my manifestation video go ahead click it girl after this one and last but not least be happy for others despite your situation you could be going through hell literal hell but if something good happens to those around you that you actually care about be happy for them and if for some reason you can't be happy for them figure that out Let's unpack that. See a therapist. But yeah, those are my things that I think that you and I should leave in 2022. So let me know what y'all, let me know some of the things that y'all gonna leave in 2022. Yeah, if you can relate, let me know down below. And also, if you got some things to add to the list, then let me know in the comments, girl. Cheers! to better mental health in the year 2023 better friendships better relationships better relationships with our damn selves and success until next time peace